Hello. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create your own personal phone database using Simpitum. Simpitum is a project designed in Qt. And basically, what it allows you is to create um, multiple records into a personal database that actually can embed different kinds of st styles like uh, bar charts, pictures, and eventually builds the forms, dynamic forms to actually manage the data, some of those with some opportunity to have some validations. In this case, we want to build some kind of heroes uh, database just to demonstrate the concept, running in affordable applications in a Windows operating system. Simpitum is, an, is a project that is posted uh, in GitHub uh, it got my attention uh, because it runs in multiple platforms and is based on Qt. This is um, an application that can be installed in multiple operating systems, allows you to create forms with pictures, with large text, eventually store everything in a SQLite database, and your files can actually export it easily to a CSV format. You also have some abilities to search and eventually manipulate your data. Also, you have abilities to synchronize with the cloud. The more powerful part is the one that lets you modify the forms dynamically to shuffle or arrange and actually build you a full, a full uh, personal <coughs> simple form database, which is really cool. The downloads are for Windows binaries, but also what I want to be showing here is the portable uh, zip file, the archive. Additionally, they will have binaries for Mac OS X, for Linux, Ubuntu Base, Arch Base, the application image, and Snap. I haven't seen an RPM, but uh, the binary should be pretty straightforward too. Um, pretty cool project. Definitely, let's go ahead and get dive into it. Downloading the downloading the portable, it looks like something like this, which is on the on the GitHub side. I want to use a. Uh, a 7-zip to uncompress the files right here on my in the same folder I'm working on. I have the the portable application that actually can run right away. Now for this exercise, I also want to need some kind of heroes. So I downloaded previously some some heroes that I want to be part of the, the database. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, drag those real quick. And if I change on the view to video icons, you can see that I have Batman, Hulk, Spider-Man, and Superman. So with all those four files for heroes, let me dive into the, the folder where Simpitum is running. Uh, let me go ahead and just execute the binary. So when I start the default database, Simpitum, uh, and basically it's managing like collections. So what I want to do here is actually want to create um, a new collection. And the new collection is going to be called Heroes. Okay, that looks pretty straightforward, pretty simplistic. It was just one click, create collections, almost like a database. Now, let's go ahead and create some fields. Um, let's go ahead and add a field like called a hero name. It's going to be we have different options like text, number, dates, creation date, modification date, check boxes, combo boxes, progress bar, image, file list, web links. It's pretty powerful. So in this case, I want to use a text. It's going to be the hero name. Actually, what I will just call the name. Hero name. Is it required field? Yes, it should be required. So my form should let me just enter data. Um, right now, you go to the table mode, we have here name, and we have uh, the record. Let me go ahead and uh, if I decide to add a new record, appears here name, I can say that my first here name is super. And if I go to table mode, it's already there. But wait. We need to add some other fields, like um, what, is, what is the here name, really first name and last name. So potentially, we need to add another field, which is going to be the first name. I'll go ahead and add it. Uh, 
is what I will require. Sure. Well, and there it is, and I can have a field called last name. This is where you require field. I can use the designer features here to make it look pretty. First name and last name. And if I go to table, you can see that the methods for first name and last name are there. So in this one, we can say var can is added. If I go to the form view, it's added as well. So this would be really cool. Let's add a picture to this hero name. Eventually, we can add another field, which is going to be an image. Right now, we can actually use the, the power of the designer, almost like build your wiki. And let me go ahead and drag it here. Let me drag the last name right here. Let me move the hero pick right here. Or I can put it underneath the name. I can make it bigger. Just like that. I still want the first name at the bottom. I still want the last name at the bottom. And maybe I want the hero name in the middle, in the center. So if I go to table, now I have a hero peak. You have it to form. I have the ability to choose um, how to enter uh, an image, which is uh, you know, Symphitum. Uh, this is super. And if I go to table, I have the record right here. If I have two forms, I can see the hero pick. Of course, if I want to have a new one, like Hulk, I can actually say it's Hulk. I can select my picture. Um, there you go, it's Hulk. And the name of Hulk is what is the name of Hulk? Bruce Banner, Dr. Bruce Banner, right? Here we go. I can add another record, like he is uh, Spider Man. I can select my the path of my image. There's a Spider Man, which is Peter Parker. And my table reflects like that, and this one can navigate the records. Uh, I'm missing one, one of the heroes, which is which hero I'm missing? Let's see. Of course, Batman. So let's get another new record. Batman and same as real. Copy your path. There's Batman. Let's put it in. The table reflects the value. So this is very powerful as you can see the methods and everything can be added. The database can actually be exported. Like as once we have me my collections database. I can uh, I can go to my collection and export the collections. It can be in a CSV, all the records. Uh, it's going to say where do you want to export it. It's going to ask you for the text for encoding. Uh, you can select the appropriate. I want to select UTF-8 CSV to export it. It's going to say where do you want to do it. You can do it in OneDrive. Uh, you can do much, uh, whatever you want it. But it's going to be a CSV file. It's going to be like heroes. Just do it, and if we dive into this folder, we can see that uh, there's a CSV file. If I open 
let's say with uh, Notepad, we can see that export successfully the metadata of the, the heroes that we entered. So it can be exported and moving around. The pictures are not quite there. I don't think the feature, the export ability for the pictures is there, but it's still something local that you can store your data and back up your file system. Uh, this is pretty cool, like a standalone database, a power figure to share with everybody. There's some other alternatives, but it's for a single user, if you want to keep uh, records of your DV DVDs, if you want to keep records of your uh, CD, uh, CDs, music CDs, or what I know, you know, what are, what are you keeping close track on these? That could be a really convenient way. This runs in Linux, this runs in Mac, this runs in Windows. It's a very super easy way to keep things in a form format without having to mess around with everything on Excel, which of course can be Excel, but for 30 megs of install, this is a pretty good, pretty good solution, pretty good database, super easy to use. Hopefully you'll enjoy it and have a great day. Uh, check out the symptom, symptom database and the QT design development that just released the version six. I look forward to learn more about the technology. Uh, in the meantime, thank you for listening. Have a great day, have a safe day, and uh, talk to you guys later on the next video. Bye now.